Now, throughout the course of this season, the Baltimore Ravens have definitely been continuing to deal with injuries. But the bittersweet thing about it is that while a lot of guys have gotten hurt, most of them have either come back or will still come back later on this season. But with Tyus Bowser, um, it's not in my opinion. It ain't looking good for him. Uh, really, especially after today. Now, Tyus Bowser, they placed him on the non-football injury list, so he would have to miss at least the first four weeks uh, of the regular season. And with Tyus Bowser, uh, it was said that he would be off to another field doing his own thing, maybe like jogging or whatnot, doing his own little mini workout and whatnot, but we hadn't heard about him joining the actual team when it came to practicing. So we've continued to wonder about his status, continued not to really hear any significant updates, just that he's around, he's in the building and whatnot, but he's not really all the way back yet. But John Harbaugh, uh, in a press conference today, well, by the time you see this video, the press conference will have been yesterday, but John Harbaugh, in a presser, he said that with Tyus Bowser, uh, he said he's going to let Tyus Bowser uh, comment on his status uh, because John Harbaugh had just been talking about David Ajabo's status, uh, and he, he did confirm what David Ajabo said, that David Ajabo is going to be doing a rehab, but he said with Tyus Bowser, I, I can't comment on that. I'll let him do the talking when it comes to that. But the scary part about what John Harbaugh said, uh, he said that the situation over the past couple of weeks has gotten a lot more complicated. And that's never anything that you want to hear because with Tyus Bowser, his situation was already complicated enough. So it went from what it sounds like. It sounds like it went from bad to worse. And then Harbaugh said, these, these Harbaugh one-liners, man, they something serious. He said, there are some decisions to be made. And you know when Harbaugh says that, you are going to be out for a long time. Now, Harbaugh did say that about Marcus Williams earlier this year. He said it last year, too. But this year, he said it about Marcus Williams. And this year, he also said it about David Ajabo. So uh, we can conclude that what Harbaugh means when he says there are decisions to be made is that the player has to opt whether they want to do rehab or they just want to go ahead and get the surgery. And with rehab, they have a chance to come back. Could take a little while, but they got a chance to come back. But with surgery... That will probably end the season. Last year, I remember um, he said th that about two different players. One uh, was Marcus Williams. He said, hey, he's he going to be out for a while. He got some decisions to make. And then with uh, he said it with uh, Michael Pierce last year. That's who it was, Michael Pierce. He said he had some decisions to make. Then Michael Pierce, like a week and, and a half later, he was like, oh, uh, I'm having season-ending surgery, and, and my season's over. So that was unfortunate because we see how big of an impact Michael Pierce has made this season. He's been balling. But anyway. With Tyus Bowser, uh, my expectations for him coming back this season uh, are very low, extremely low. I, I don't think we're going to see Tyus Bowser this year, not after Harbaugh's comments today. Uh, it was always a little bit shaky. I expected him to be back, and we've every time we talk about somebody coming back, every time we talk about the Baltimore Ravens, they're not even at full strength yet, we talk about Tyus Bowser. Huh? He can add to these Baltimore Ravens that much more, but I just I don't see it happening this year. Hopefully, hey, hopefully I'll be wrong. Hopefully, he will come back this year and add to everything that the Baltimore Ravens already have, but it just, I, I don't think it's looking likely. So, we'll just have to continue to wait and watch and see what happens with number 54. Now, well, somebody who's probably going to get fined like 54000 uh, is Kyle Hamilton. Maybe not that much, but he is going to get a large chunk of change taken out of his wallet by the NFL because of his hit uh, on, was it Chris Moore? I think it was Chris Moore. Former Baltimore Raven. Chris Moore. Hey, hey, shout out to Chris Moore because after the Ravens, I think he went to the Texans and now he's with the Titans and what? Hey, his career is continuing. So I'm proud of Chris Moore. But anyway, um, Kyle Hamilton, he had laid out Chris Moore. Uh, he was going for the ball, just trying to negate the play, man. But unfortunately, he hit Chris Moore in the helmet. That took Chris Moore out, but that also got Kyle Hamilton ejected. And I was surprised that he got ejected for that um, because, yeah, it was a defenseless receiver, but when you eject somebody, usually that kind of makes it like they're playing dirty or that it was intentional. I don't think it was intentional with Kyle Hamilton. We have not seen anything that has suggested that Kyle Hamilton is a dirty player. We have not seen that at all throughout his career. I know it's been only a year and change, but nothing suggests that Kyle Hamilton is a dirty player at all. This is not a continuous thing. This is not a habitual thing. It just, it just happened. It was, it was unfortunate. So hopefully Chris Moore is straight um, and there are no long-term things, but... There was some debate whether he, Kyle Hamilton, would be suspended or not. I never thought he would be suspended, but uh, especially because there's not a pattern. 
had there been a pattern of this behavior and these malicious hits to the head and whatnot, then I would, oh, okay, yeah, he about to get suspended, but there hasn't been. But Tom Pelissero, he just confirmed it uh, today. He said, Raven safety Kyle Hamilton is not expected to be suspended for the helmet-to-helmet hit on Titans wide receiver Chris Moore that got Hamilton ejected on Sunday in London. It'll be reviewed like all plays uh, for a possible fine. Yeah, he, he's going to get fined. So, Kyle Hamilton, good thing he's a first-round pick because he got nice salary. He got a nice bonus. So, yeah, he'll, he'll be able to pay it off. No problem. Um, now, um, something that happened, well, actually didn't happen yesterday that I really expected to happen was us seeing more of Keaton Mitchell on offense. We did see him on special teams, but I expected to see him just for a little bit on offense. I expected nothing crazy, but the way that they've been sprinkling in some Kenyon Drake, the way that they've been uh, sprinkling in some Melvin Gordon, uh, I thought we were going to say to see the same thing with Keaton Mitchell, especially since he was active and they've been sharing the wealth amongst all the running backs, but we just didn't. Now Harbaugh did comment on that. He said, um, somebody asked me if Keaton Mitchell will be getting into that running back rotation. He said, absolutely. He said he's going to be active now, possibly. Uh, he's got to earn it every week, sure, but he played well on special teams, and he's done a good job in practice on offense the last two weeks. So I'm sure Todd will be looking for opportunities to get him involved, and, and that'll be real nice to see. Now, my, my guy JT made a really, really good point about Keaton Mitchell, um, and he talked about even upcoming with this Lions game that it would be smart of the Ravens if, I mean, obviously, hopefully, Gus Edwards and Justice Hill, they continue to do their thing. But if they do sprinkle in Keaton Mitchell, maybe save him, save him for the second half or something, because with Keaton Mitchell, you ain't got no film on him. All you got is preseason. That's it. That's it. All you got is preseason film on Keaton Mitchell and nothing else. So if they can sprinkle Keaton Mitchell in, then the Lions, they can't do no game planning for that. They, they, they can't do nothing about that. So, hey, we'll see. We'll see if they, 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 they take my guys, uh, his, his advice when it comes to the way they work Keaton Mitchell in. But with, with what Harbaugh said, um, Keaton Mitchell has been, like he said, he's been, he been doing a good job of practice on offense. So he is getting to practice there. I mean, he is a running back after all. Uh, so it's just, now it's just a matter of opportunity. Hopefully he can go, uh, the Geno Stone route to where Geno, not, not nobody in front of him getting injured, but for when he does get the opportunity, he makes the most of his opportunity. And man, Geno Stone, man, it's crazy because Geno Stone, not a starter. He has had to start some obviously, but not a starter, and he's tied for the league lead in interceptions right now. That's amazing, man. Geno Stone, man, he's a baller. He he gone. He he's out of here, but he is a baller, man. He is um, you know, he he ain't coming back to the Ravens no more. Obviously, not in no bad blood kind of way, but he's gonna go get some money, man. He especially if he continues this, Geno Stone is going to get paid. And some other guys that, are, that their stock continues to rise, their pack, pockets continue to get fatter. Justin Matabike, oh, yeah, he he getting a lot of money, man. <laughs> He's going to get a lot of money, man. And then, of course, the guy we've been talking about every single week. And it's crazy. We, we, we could keep talking about these guys every week because they keep making plays every week, both Justin Matabike and Patrick Queen. So I'm I'm, I'm going to be happy for those guys when they get their bread, but... Mm, they're going to get a lot of bread from somebody. Now, um, the Baltimore Ravens, John Harbaugh was talking about their schedule and how the league contacted them a while back uh, and gave them some options and stuff that, well, hey, would you prefer to play in London here or then at this time and whatnot? And he, John Harbaugh said that they told him, like, hey, you, it's not a guarantee that you'll get this schedule, but we just want to sort of just put some feelers out there for seeing how you, how you want this thing to be done. And John Harbaugh said he told him that he didn't want to have an early bye week. He wanted to have the London game uh, early, didn't want to have the early bye week, but he did not have the bye week after the London game. So with all that travel that they just did to and from, good thing they went there early because he did talk about that. He wanted to do things different from last time. So they went there early, but now that they, they travel back and guys will be in the building tomorrow, well, today when you see this video, guys will be in the building today and then they'll practice on Wednesday and whatnot, but now they got to get acclimated back to the States after having gotten acclimated to being over there. Now they got to get back acclimated to being over here. And I, I just hope that this like this week with when it comes to coaching, when it comes to preparation, obviously this stuff is important every week. But this week is extremely important because you're going against the five and one 
Detroit Lions. And while we know the, the people that they played on their schedule, I, but I mean, you can say the same thing about the Ravens. So, yeah. Uh, but their record is what their record is. They have taken care of five out of six games and only lost one. So, with the and with Detroit Lions, if you look at their uh their games, they win in all of these games by more than one score. These, these ain't no close games. That they they taking care of business in a major way. So the Baltimore Ravens need to be extra, extra, extra prepared. But I just hope that they can get a good amount of rest. Harbaugh talked about how a lot of players, they probably going to be sleeping all day on Monday. And they slept all day on Monday because, again, you've seen this video on Tuesday. But it's important because this like this is a good opportunity for the Baltimore Ravens to really get back on track. You got a team coming in hot. And like I said, they've been blowing, not blowing people out, but winning decisively. So if you can take care of business against them because they feeling themselves, they got all this momentum right now. Ravens, I don't think Ravens are feeling themselves right now. I, I think Ravens are very humble right now because they've been so shaky. They haven't been dominant. They haven't been consistent. They've been very shaky. Now, thank goodness they won more games than they lost, which is always great and always important. But they're not, they ain't peak yet. And again, Lamar said, now, nah, yeah, he said, we got to peak at the right time. Okay, no problem, Lamar, I got you. So handle business against these Detroit Lions. We're going to talk more about the Detroit Lions this upcoming week, but handle business against them because right now, yeah, you, you the humble Ravens right now. You need to remain humble, but this game could be a nice big confidence booster.